there, welcome back. Okay, so we're here at DL Martin, and it's uh, uh, Thursday, which is uh, day four of this uh, Kaizen event that uh, we've been uh, facilitating this week, along with Gimba Consulting. And uh, I have Matt here, and uh, Matt's actually the lean, uh, kind of the team leader for, for all lean initiatives here at DL Martin. And basically what we're gonna do here is just have a little discussion on the week that was. Maybe talk to us a little bit about um, how the event went, um, maybe on a day-by-day -day basis. And I think we'll have some video clips that we'll be able to sprinkle in here as we uh, tell the story. So I guess before we get into the Kais, I want you to tell us a little bit about you and what you do here at DL Martin. Okay, well, I'm Matt McCullough. I've been here at DL Martin Company for about 12 years. I started out on the floor as machine operator. I'd moved myself, uh, progressed you know, onto the manufacturing engineer side and then started to go into the lean role. Uh -huh. And that's what I've been doing now for the past year at Good. the Deal Martin Company. Good. Okay, so I know that you name all of your teams, your Kaizen teams here at Deal Martin, sometimes some, uh, let's say, creative names. <laughs> yeah. So what was the name of this team? Yeah, this, uh, this, this team name we come up with this week was the 338 Hustlers. And based on the, that's based off the line that we currently work on. It's uh, 338 Jack line. So it, and they were hustling? Yes, they were hustling all week. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> all right, so what was the objective of the event? Uh, the objective on the, on the event was to uh, decrease process time by about 30% and decreased walking distance by about 30% and also improve our 5S score that's okay. in okay. this area. So go ahead and start us down a journey. Let's, let's go to day one. Um, day one, we typically kick off. We run some training for a couple hours in the mornings. Uh, we try to focus on uh, the basics of lean, uh, the seven waste, and also we do some 5S training also on day one. Mm -hmm. um, then typically we go out, we do a 5S audit score of the area that we're looking at. Then we typically go, you know, start looking at our par processes that we're currently doing and document, you know, what we currently have, you know, our walking, our process time, and try to set, then come back in. We do a little brainstorming, mm -hmm. you know, on what, what can we do, what waste we're seeing. You know, we do this with the team. I just keep thinking of like a, a, like a old action rifle. <laughs> And it's something you can load it and put it in, and then the next clip it. You know, Unload it at the other end. Yeah. And then we typically bo go back out and uh, try to put a plan together. What What do we want to do this week? What do we, What do we want to implement this mm -hmm. week? Mm -hmm. So, how important do you feel the uh, the training part of the Kaizen event is? It's extremely important because if people that have never been experienced in the Kaizen before. They, they, don't, they don't have any idea. So you have to give them the basics yeah. and, and then give them a hands-on approach. Now, how do you guys facilitate the training? Do you do it yourself or? Um, we, we currently, we, we use the Gemba Consulting yeah. you know, training uh, modules that they have set up. Yeah. Uh, the online modules have turned out to be really good modules that we use a lot of. And also they have their own uh, PowerPoints that, they, that right. they have set up for us. Good, good. Okay, so day two. Day two, day two, what we typically get into, we come in in the mornings, we review what we're gonna do that day, and then we go out, typically go out on the floor, the shop floor where everything's to be done, and we start doing some 5S, you know, sorting out all the area, mm -hmm. you know, because we don't wanna do that before we you know, do any of our uh, cycle times and all right. that, because we want true current cycle time so we typically wait till day two to do that uh, go through the first three S's you know on mm -hmm. your 5S and that's torn leads into day two typically uh, pretty much all day and then some into the third day also okay so then what do you what, what's day three look like uh, day three normally by then we're starting to implement the idea so uh, we put a shadow board up on our uh, Mazak lathe we currently had a pegboard up we had uh, gauges hanging from it, but it was very flimsy. Uh, we ended up painting it, but it just didn't look right. Okay. So we ended up pulled that down. We used uh, some galvanized steel and burnout on our laser cutting machine. Yeah. And it was just so simple to do that. And it was rigid, very rigid. Yeah. And the, the shadow tape stuck to it really good. good. So good. it worked out really well for us. Good, good. Okay. 
Um, what about day four? Uh, day four, we try to do we try to do some finishing touch-ups on the the what we wanted to implement, mm -hmm. and then you know we practice. We put a presentation together, and then we start to practice for it. Um, now, now I know that because I was here for most of the event, you weren't able to to actually facilitate all the changes that you wanted to make this week. Tell me a little bit about how you got around that. Yeah, that's right. Um, we decided our we wanted to work on one piece flow, and and how that was going to work out was we wanted to move some machines together, our saw, our lathe, and our grinder, and create a cell. And what that would help with the handling part mm -hmm. of the parts, you know, it's one piece flow right into the back of the machines, and it would help reduce our, our processing times, not sure. necessarily our cycle times, our processing times. Right. And that required some rigors to come in, and we weren't able to get okay. any rigors scheduled in for this week, but okay. we're gonna put a plan together Try to get them in here within the next week or two, okay. and have a footprint laid out for them so they know where to move the machines. But you were able to do some simulations, though, weren't you? Yes, we did use the team members. Uh, it's tried to use our our minds, you know, yeah. use team members as tables and that yeah. sort of thing to try to Good. try to simulate what our potential savings could be Good. by moving this cell. So. We're flipping a jack here into the Mazak lathe, part of a simulation that we're trying to do to achieve one piece flow. What we're going to try to do is move the saw that's on the far end of the building with the Mazak, and from the Mazak that it splits up work between the welder and the grinder over here. What we hope to do is get rid of the cart system where we are carting up parts and go to a one piece flow, but in order to, before we want to move the equipment next to each other, we want to practice how the operator would interface if he had one piece flow. So we have operators standing over here by the skid of parts. They're acting as the material handling as if the material was one piece flow to present it to the operator so that he can load and unload. What we hope to do is have the operator, instead of putting on the carts, go directly to the grinder and that way we can reduce the lead time and then we can also reduce the work in process. The other thing that we're evaluating during this time study is how much is machine time versus how much is idle time for the operator to have availability that the operator can be cross-trained running multiple machines. Uh, doing an operator cycle time bar chart, we see opportunity with the idle time that operators can do multiple work while the machine's running. So that's what we're trying to simulate here. This is the portion where we're unloading. Typically, an operator would have to unload it, put it on a cart, move it to the side. We want him to say that this is going to be sitting right next to the grinder and he loads it onto the grinding bench. In the new method, they'll have a, another piece on a table right there coming from the far end that he can slide across. So the operators are handing it to him to show that he can be slid right across. With this time, we can see what the actual operator cycle time is. And once the jack is clamped up, then the operator can start the machine cycle. Tell me a little bit about how you do report outs, and I know we've actually recorded the report out, so we'll be able to share that with the folks here, but uh, tell us a little bit about how you go T about that. Typically on our report outs, you know, we want to present to our management group at the company what we did this week, so they understand why we set a whole week aside yeah. just for this training. Yeah. Um, we typically, you know, give them the scope, what we're doing, our goals, and then show them the Kaizen implemented. Um, show them some action pictures so they can see some of the people in action you yeah. know, that were on the team and then give them the results give them the results of what we actually did yeah and they they really like to see that 
you know, so that way they know we're heading in the right direction yeah. on this lean journey. Yeah. Now, f for the folks that, that do uh, the report out, I mean, you're involved a little bit, but, but the team members are doing most of it, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So not all those guys are polished presenters, right? No, so, no. Um, you, how do you get around that? <clears throat> well, you'd be surprised the people uh, get in front of the management group. You'd think they'd get nervous and stuff, but they typically, they like to talk about what they did. Yeah. And it really gives them that incentive, you know, to, to present in front of the management, the CEOs sure. or the presidents of the companies, yeah. it really helps them. And they, it's easy for them to talk about what they did. And that's basically what the report out is, is talk about what you did this week yeah. and have a visual on the board for them. Yeah. We'll kick it off for Jack. Well, as you can see, uh, Tim and I are standing there. We're getting ready to structure a new shadow board there at the Mazak. And all of this product you see there is kind of everything that was laying on the table. And this is a before the Kaizen event and actually an after clutter disorganization. Uh, if you grab for something, you don't really know what you got. It was there. <laughs> uh, we created a new shadow board to put out the hand gauge and some product, which you see over here. Easier to find the gauge that you need now. Everything's labeled, everything's marked. Uh, much better organization it was. Very good. <coughs> These are uh, saw blades. You see in the next picture, um, they got brackets to hang each one by the pitch of the saw blade and it helps uh, save floor space. Yeah. And what it also, they, there's two different types of blades they use back there. They have a, a 610 pitch and a 46 pitch. Um, that's kind of an oddball one, but they do keep one on hand. Where before it was kind of mixed up within the boxes so the operators didn't really know what they had you know, when they were grabbing until they actually pulled it out. Now they can see their inventory, it's up on the wall, you know, and if they know if they need to reorder anything. So, sitting behind this, and we'll get a good shot, we'll pan across this, tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here. What um, is this? Typically what we have here, uh, we have, here. you know, about nine events on here, and we just keep them revolving. We have our team name with our team picture, you know, Everybody can see who was involved with these. Then we have the results of in some or productivity improvements, mm -hmm. um, lead times, that sort of thing. Uh, we've done some office kaizans in, that you can see up here. Um, and then typically on the bottom here, we have before and after, you know, our event summary, you know, just some pictures we have of it. Now, are these all the events that you've done this year, or? These are the past nine events of what we've done, and it's just a revolving board. Okay. The oldest one drops off, and it's typically about six months okay. old. Um, it drops off the board, and then we put the fresh ones up. So then, I notice over here you have an area for planning. Well, what, what, what is this one all about? Um, what that is, that's our uh, project slash Kaizen planning board. Mm -hmm. um, we like to put on there what, what our events are, how many we've done, so that way management, anybody can come into these training rooms and they can look and see you know, what was done, what do we have planned out in the future, and it really helps out with the planning side of it, you know, for the, the production side, uh, the right. supervisors and that sort of. So we're here in late October, or early October, I guess, or and you have, uh, what, a few uh, few more events scheduled for this year, right? Yeah, we have three more events scheduled for this year. We have a TPM event and two more Kaizen events. Um, we haven't scheduled anything for the month of December yet, but I'm sure there's going to be another uh, Kaizen event and a TPM probably squeezed in there before the end of the year. Wow. So, so, you, so D.L. Martin has definitely bought into the Kaizen mindset, huh? 100%. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and it's been good to you guys? Yes. Yes, we've got proven results on on these sheets here behind us that um, it's it's worth it. It's okay. worth every effort that you put into it. So for, for all of our Gimba Academy uh, friends out there uh, across the world, do you have any words of advice maybe for someone that's kind of new to the Kaizen journey? You use Gemba's training. Uh, I'll, I'll say that right now. They have it set up perfect. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. Well, I appreciate that. Okay. Well, thank you. Yep. Thank right. you, Ron. Take care. Yep.